Yesterday's hymn was by an Irishman, and today's hymn is another great German hymn that was translated by uh, Catherine Wickworth. We've been uh, looking at the theme of indwelling sin in our hearts, which is Satan's greatest ally to try to ruin and obstruct God's work of recreation of our lives into the image of his son. When God first created Adam and Eve in his image, they became the target of Satan's malice and hatred. God had given them the hope of eternal life, the opportunity to eat of the tree of life uh, if they walked in obedience and faith and trusted in his goodness. And the idea of human beings having eternal life was something that was completely abhorrent to Satan. And so he set out to destroy God's image uh, in them and to rob them of that eternal hope. And the way that he targeted them in the garden was by sowing doubt in their minds about the goodness of God. By sowing doubt in their minds about God's goodness, he undermined God's promise and therefore was challenging the hope that God had given to them because of his promise. And I think these insights are really vital for every child of God in whom he is restoring his image now. Because Satan's attacks are just the same. Uh, he gets us to question the goodness of God, create doubt in God's promises, uh, robs us of our hope, and unbelief rises in our hearts about whether God is going to fulfill his promises to me. As the first man of the new creation, we know Jesus experienced what it was like to be targeted by Satan. And he overcame Satan, not just in the wilderness, but throughout his life and especially on the cross. And I suppose especially on the cross was where Jesus was faced in uh, the most profound and unimaginable way with the question of the goodness of God and what he was going through. However, there was no sin in Jesus that Satan was able to use as an ally. And even when Satan attacked Adam and Eve, there was no fifth column in them because sin had not entered their hearts. But it's different for us. And the Lord Jesus knows how relentlessly Satan would attack us uh, once we were united to him by faith. And he would know our vulnerability because of indwelling sin that was already within us. And so that is why Jesus warned us, as he warned the disciples, to watch and to pray if we were to give in to temptation. And just as in the garden, uh, one of Satan's aims was to uh, make Adam and Eve question the goodness of God. So it's exactly the same with us. One of his tactics and one of the things that indwelling sin in our hearts is most prone to do is to doubt. Uh, it's one of the most uh, fundamental and perverse of the sins uh, or of the root of sin that's in us to doubt God to doubt his goodness to doubt his promises and therefore to rob us of hope uh, and cause unbelief to take the place of faith and so Jesus tells us to watch uh, on the one hand to watch out for Satan's strategies and sin's tactics in our minds and hearts questioning God's goodness. And I also believe it means to watch as well uh, for the promises of God and the word of God and especially to fix our eyes on the Lord Jesus. Uh, we're to watch and we're to pray. We have to pray for the wisdom, strength, power and endurance to resist and more than resist, to put to death indwelling sin with its doubts. Um, and... Uh, every attempt it makes to get in the way of our being renewed into the image of the Lord Jesus. Watching and praying is not something that we can do of ourselves. We need the insight of the Holy Spirit, first of all, to watch and see what Satan is doing, what sin is doing within us. And we need the Spirit's power and strength to put sin to death and to continue to believe in the goodness of God without wavering, regardless of our circumstances 
or what our own thoughts may be saying, by the Spirit's power to believe without wavering in the goodness of God, hope in his promises and trust that he will fulfill them for us. I believe this is why singing psalms and hymns is such a powerful weapon against Satan and indwelling sin. It's interesting to me that uh, in the passage on the warfare in the Christian life in Ephesians, uh, that passage follows uh, um, just a, a chapter before. It follows the bit where Paul says that we're to be filled with the Spirit uh, as we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Because it's as we sing about these truths that our hearts are filled with faith and hope and sin is crushed and uh, doubt and unbelief are crushed in our hearts. Singing praise to God is not some kind of mantra uh, that's supposed to make us just feel better about God or feel better about ourselves. It's declaring the truths such as the truths in this hymn today, for instance, about watching and praying that uh, hope and faith is inspired in us to really go on believing in the goodness of God. And it's, it's praising him in faith and believing his truth that crushes the lies that tend to rise up within us. And so uh, in the series of hymns over the next few days about this conflict with indwelling sin and the need to watch and pray, we're encouraged that despite our failures and the many times that we get defeated along the way, that uh, through Christ, the strength and power of his spirit and holding on to his promises, that we will ultimately prevail. But we must learn to watch and pray because we're in perpetual conflict with Satan and with sin 24 hours a day, every day of the year. And I believe it's hymns like this and singing hymns like this that only, only remind us of this, but strengthen us and empower us to mortify sin in our hearts. Rise, my soul, to watch and pray From your sleep awaken Be not by the evil day Unawares or taken For the foe well we know is his harvest reaping while a Christian sleeping. Watch against the devil's snares, lest asleep he find you, for indeed no pains he spares to deceive and blind you. Satan's prey every day are securely sleeping and no watch are keeping. Watch against yourself, my soul, lest with grace you trifle. Let not self your thoughts control nor God's mercy stifle. Pride and sin lurk within all your hopes to scatter. Heed not when they flatter. But while watching also pray to the Lord unceasing, he will free you come what may, strength and faith increasing. O oh Lord, bless in distress daily my desire to serve you in spite. 